This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 294, Juan Acosta on Dental Hypnosis. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. A quick note before we begin, today's episode is in a small series of bringing people back onto the program who were on this show when it first launched in the first 10 or so episodes before I had a clue what I was doing and now doing it right. And in perfect timing, we've got Juan Acosta back on the program talking about dental hypnosis, talking about working in conjunction with dentists, the things you really need to know in terms of networking, and an amazing shift in terms of perceptions about what we need to understand about their world, what benefits we may provide, and why calling them up and saying, I can help with fill in the blank, may not be the best route to go about building that connection, building that bond. So there's some incredible strategies here. If you want to network with any medical profession, there's strategies you're going to pick out of this week's session with some really cool insights as to exactly how to best do that. A couple of resources come out of it as well. We're going to make this easy on you and that if you head over to worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash dental, that'll bring you directly over to the show notes of this episode and make sure you go there right away if you're listening in time because coming up the end of October, Juan is hosting the Hypnodontics Summit. As of now, there's about 30 presenters, 30 presentations from all around the world, people you may know in the hypnotic profession, as well as dental professionals as well. And letting this really become an incredible networking opportunity, make sure you listen to what Juan says to do with this content, an incredible networking opportunity to share value, to share insight, to open up a dialogue and start to build an incredible bond in the way that we can bite off a new market. See, see what I did there? Uh, which by the way, this event over 30 speakers, I'll be doing a bit of a bonus event with Juan right after everything wraps up, just given some timing of projects I'm up to, which by the way, this sounds good, right? Yeah, it's free. Yeah. So go to worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash dental. That'll be the show notes for this episode and click the big purple button. We'll make it easy on you in terms of exactly where to go to sign up for this incredible free summit. Speakers including Cheryl and Larry Elman, Roy Hunter, Beryl Komar, Scott Sandland, uh, Kevin Cole. Who else do we have here? Uh, Juan's going to be doing a presentation James Hazelrig, a lot of names that you're going to recognize, Michael DeShallot, Nicole Wackernagel, Tracy Barrett-Adams, Carl Smith, Alan Barsky, Sheila Granger, the list keeps going, plus an incredible lineup presented in Spanish as well. How about that? So again, all the details, it's a free event over at worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash dental. That's where you can click over and see exactly how to get that incredible opportunity. While you're there too, Check out hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. That's the all-access pass to my hypnosis business training library. If you want to have some more networking strategies beyond the medical model, if you want to find some better ways to put your right information in front of the right people at the right time, that's basically the roadmap behind how I've created three separate six-figure hypnosis businesses. That's where I publish what's working now in terms of what's bringing in those clients at a premium level. And it's not just a program. It's not just a product with videos, it's also a massive community, members all around the world who you can bounce your questions off of. I'm there to help you out, so are hundreds of others as well. Check it out, join us inside hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. With that, let's jump directly into this content pack session. Take some notes, people. This is good stuff. Here we go, episode number 294, Juan Acosta on dental hypnosis. So the quick side story here is that there were a bunch of people who were on perhaps the first 20 or 30 episodes of this podcast. And quite honestly, that is before I figured out exactly what this was going to become. So we're now continuing our now classic series of having those great people back on the program and doing it the proper way. So Juan Acosta, so good to have you back here on the program. Jason, so good to be back. And thanks so much for inviting me. Yeah. For those that are curious, you can check out episode number 12, August 14th, 2014. We were so young. You can check that out, but this one's, sorry, this one's going to be better. Uh, so so catch us up. Give us a quick intro as to who you are and what you've been up to since then. 
Sure. I was actually, yeah, thinking it was probably in the first couple handfuls of episodes of the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast. So I appreciate it then and I appreciate being on now. And I'm, I've been up to dental hypnosis as usual. And the last time that I was on, we were just getting launched. The Hypnodontics book was just getting launched, which, by the way, has now been in the bestsellers list for, well, those six years Beautiful. on Amazon. Ever since, I've been pretty much teaching and training at dental conferences and hypnosis conferences. And currently, I've, uh, since the last year, started producing a podcast called The Natural Comfort Specialist with a main audience of dental professionals with, of course, the added audience of hypnosis and coaching professionals who are interested in working with dentistry professionals. So That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So no, we're going to bounce around here a bit. Sure. What would you say in terms of maybe gaps that are missing or things that we're overlooking? What's important about having people who do the work that we do? This is going out to a hypnosis audience. What should they be aware of in terms of either supplementing or even networking with other dentists? You know, I find that it's so important that in most hypnosis classes that I have attended, you are taught all the great things that we can do for dentistry professionals, right? We can help your patients relax. We can help them with gag reflex. We can also help them with teeth grinding, that sort of stuff. And we are then as hypnotherapists, mildly prepared hypnotherapists in so many cases, we're eager to just jump in and go to a practice and say, hey, I can help your patients stop grinding their teeth, right? Whereas the question becomes, well, how does that really benefit the practice, right? If the dental practice gets their patients to stop grinding their teeth, it's a nice in some ways, and it also is not nice in some other ways because they do sell, you know, 400 to $800 bite card that, that goes with some treatments. You know, so necessarily what, I, what I'm thinking is a lot of times when we approach dental professionals as a not very well trained, you know, in these arenas, hypnosis professionals, we are approaching them for the wrong reasons. So I think one of the things that is key to understand, I'll give you a few keys today. I'm not sure how many, well, however, however, <laughs> however long the time goes. As you say, we'll for for we began, we began this before we hit record with going, you're going to teach this many number of strategies. And as soon as we began, I'm like, we're going to change that number by the time we're done. So we call it strategies for dental hypnosis. I was, I was going to say, it'll be three tips. And then in, in good fashion, as you normally do, we'll say six or seven or something along there those lines. Go. Just keep taking notes, guys. So basically understanding that anytime that we are approach a dental practice, their motivation is maybe a little bit different from ours, right? We think that because we're going to help their patients feel better, stop their bad habits or do, you know, stop their unconscious responses to certain things and fears, we think that it's going to make their practice so much better. But we don't realize that inside the dental practice, and I know this from actually working inside the dental practice as a manager, as a VIP patient coordinator, as a you know marketing person, I've been inside many dental practices and working for several months at a time in single practices. So, you know, the, the perspective that I'm giving you is from seeing these things from the inside and seeing vendors basically come in to offer stuff, you know, a hypnotist walking into the door and saying, Hey, I can help your patients relax. And I'm thinking from behind the desk, well, thank you very much, but I can also do that with nitrous and they pay me a hundred bucks for doing that. Which just to elaborate on that for a second, it's where I was at a marketing event, I believe last year. And the perception, well, the, this comes back to just simply the power of asking the right questions and really getting to know what their world is about. I met somebody who part of what he did as a marketer was designing marketing systems for eye doctors. And as he explained, the eye doctors generally don't make money on the eye exam and they make money on the sale of glasses. Now their competition is the fact that now you can take your prescription and go online and there's companies that will mail you three sets of frames and then you mail back the two you don't want and you're done. So his marketing offer was the fact that he goes, I know how to isolate the lists of people whose insurance actually have a stipend for glasses because hmm. those people don't care how much the glasses cost because it's built into their service and they're going to get them from the doctor and that's really what pays their bills. So I, I think 
the, the mistake to make from what you've said would be from the outside perspective, someone going, oh, they just want to hook the patient in and make money. Well, it's what in the networking world is called a contact sphere, different ways to resolve the same issue. And at the end of the day, the dentist very clearly does care about the well-being of their patient. Absolutely. But also at the end of the day, they got bills to pay. And that's from their model of the world, that's their solution for that issue. And we need to respect that as well. Absolutely. And when I say that that we're basically reaching into, into their pocket when we're trying to, for example, help a patient that's anxious relax, you know, because they're not selling the nitrous, I'm not meaning that all dental professionals are, you know, greedy and that they're all after just that and trying to like sell you a used car like some people feel that way, you know. Most of them do have their patient's best interest at heart. However, they know that the tool they have, nitrous, already works. It works well. The other tool they have, the bite guard, already works well for their purpose, right? So, and they're making money from it. So it, you have to think about it, you know, as, as a human, as a business person, that maybe we're approaching them with a slightly, maybe the wrong intent in their eyes. You know, we can keep the same intent. We just have to understand, be a little bit smarter than the person we're approaching in, you know, in the moment and deliver the right thing. So I guess with that really comes my second tip, which is to understand specifically who in the practice you're talking to. Because mm -hmm. a, a dental practice is made up of, you know, say five different roles, six, you know, the dentist, the assistant, the hygienist, the front office person, you know, there might be a tech person. There's all these different people. And guess what? They don't all have a common goal. They all have a common goal to have the practice work, but they don't all have the same specific goal for their patients that they see. Does that make sense? The, the yeah, front office person wants the, the patient to be calm and relaxed and on time. They want them to show up for their appointment because that's their job. That's their responsibility within the practice, right? And the assistant, that person wants the patient to be prepared for the doctor once they're in the chair. Right? And they also want the patients to show up. I mean, the patients showing up, it's a huge deal. Yeah. And it's and it's something that is so overlooked in when we approach dental practices as hypnosis professionals is one of the things we should, we should say is, hey, do you have any patients that are not showing up? I can help you how to influence them to actually show up for their appointments. And, you know, that will open the door a lot quicker for you than saying, I can help your patients who are grinding their teeth, which is what we think we should do because that's our end goal. So when we are able to approach them and say, hey, we can influence your patients who are not showing up to actually show up more often, nice. reduce your number of no-shows and cancellations, they will love you for that. And when you walk in and you teach them that you can influence their patients to do that. And by the way, you know, what else are your patients doing that doesn't work for you? How about when they grind their teeth and they end up breaking that crown you just built for them a couple of days ago? Does that bother you? Oh, yeah, of course, you know, then we have to get them back in and then it's no production because we're redoing work rather than having a patient that's paying. Ah, okay, well, let me help you influence those patients as well. And we can do that in conjunction with the delivery of your bite guard so that you are not necessarily losing the cell. We're just adding a service. We're improving the patient experience, which is really what this, you know, my, my whole quest has been since I started working with dental professionals in 2012 is to improve the dental patient experience because nice. and it is so it is so important people just don't realize and the, the ones that do realize go to the dentist in spite of being fearful and anxious and not wanting to be there because from the behind the desk of a dental practice what you hear is 80 percent of the people coming in and saying oh my god i hate being here <laughs> this is the worst you know and that's not fun so if we can aim at helping dental professionals, dentistry professionals, because they're everywhere in the practice, they don't necessarily need to be dental, dentally trained, you know, technically, clinically trained. But if we can teach them how to make their, you know, build enough rapport with their patients, build a better relationship so that they can actually like them, you know, enjoy their time there. Because, you know, if you come into somewhere, an office, and you are anxious, you're fearful, of course, things are going to hurt more. Of course, the time is going to seem like it's passing slower. Of course, you know, you're in that hypnotic state that is kind of negative in that way. Mm -hmm. So if the patient comes in and the team in the dental practice is able to deliver just some gentle 
words that we know how to use, which of course our audience today can learn in your other 290 something podcast, <laughs> then they can actually create a big effect, you know, a ripple effect, which everybody plays a role in the practice and it's a different role, but just imagine how much better it would be passing the ball if the front office person has delivered something that has made the patient feel better. Now, then when the patient walks into the back part of the office and talks to the assistant, their mood is already better and that interaction is already better. You know, it starts at a higher level. So then what shape does this typically take? And I, I think the beauty of all of this is that you know, there's the option of there's some who end up in residence at a dental office and that's where they're working. That's part of mm -hmm. Scott Sandlin's backstory. There's some that are then referred that as here I was in a previous office where the dentist uh, down the hall would very often send a text message and go, we're walking over and he walks someone down the hall to introduce them. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> you know, and it, it was never for me the actual going in and doing it. But then again, from a dental perspective, here's the time that I gave a talk to an office of periodontists and talked through some of the language patterns about, you know, talk about pressure rather than pain. Here's different language things that you, you use, you know, different ways that we can go this. What, what routes do you most often see as, let's say, perhaps the more beneficial ways of actually then implementing those services? Yeah. So just to mention back, I did start in dental hypnosis because of Scott, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I was eager to get in to work with dental professionals. And I was following his idea of meeting the referral source. And I went out door knocking, you know, actually walking in the door, just like I'm talking about hypnotists doing, and that's why I know we do it. And basically getting the door slammed in my face until I was able to make a connection. And what I found out after working inside practices is that the best thing we can do as hypnotists and coaches when we are approaching them is to treat the practice itself like a client, to understand that if you were to imagine, you already have the hypnotic skills to deal with your private clients, right? Your private client comes in and they have internal conflicts, they have issues, they have bad habits. Well, guess what? When you go into a practice, if you think of them, the building, the group, the team as a client, you can begin to understand that they have also internal struggles right? That they have little bickering that goes on between one another sometimes, right? We, we have that. So if we can understand the practice and begin to see those relationships and treat them like a client, I think we can approach them and say, hey, doctor, do you think, you know, I know that dental teams a lot of times have a little bit of internal, you know, issues and turmoil. Do you think that it would be beneficial for your team if I came in for 45 minutes just on a lunch and learn and let whoever wants to join, join in a self-hypnosis class where I'll teach everybody how to relax, how to recenter. And, you know, a percentage of those doctors that you approach with something like that are going to say yes. So the question becomes, how do you meet all these people? You know, because the, yeah, meet the referral source when you're sitting at the restaurant and the person next to you is a doctor and you strike up a conversation. That's great, but that's a very chance thing. I mean, how many restaurants do you have to visit? How many places do you have to sit, you know, in order to, uh, how many conversations you need to strike with the next person to find the doctors, you know, like, it's not going to be that easy. And uh, I don't think this had happened when we recorded the first time, Juan, but the, uh, the time that there are dental sort of substitute services out there that the hygienist calls in sick, there's a service they can call, they can send someone else. Absolutely. The dentist is out sick, they can call someone else and here's one that's available that day. And so long story short, I'm at the dentist I'd seen for 10 years, but <laughs> he's not there that day. And the substitute, while the hands are in the mouth goes, oh, I see you're a hypnotist. Are you primarily Ericksonian or do you tend to be more Almanian? And like genuinely shoving his hands away from my face. I'm like, oh, we got to talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which that's probably not going to happen again in that respect, unless they've, well, unless they've heard from you. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting response, right? From a dental professional. So anyway, you know, just basically knowing, understanding that these people are all different. They all have their, you know, the, the things that are going to make them tick and treating the practice like a client. So if you understand the internal struggles, if you are you know, able to, to sort of pay attention to the things that are surrounding what's going on and, you know, think a little deeper about what you're offering, not, not just come in and say, Hey, let me, let me help your, 
your anxious patients because they will just, you know, they'll say, oh, thank you very much. And they will take your cards and they will act very friendly. And then you'll sit at home and you'll turn purple waiting for the call. It's <laughs> not going to work. You know, don't hold your breath. <laughs> and then um, I guess the next thing would be when you're approaching these practices, you need to have certain information, you know, so where do you get this information? Just like you're doing in this podcast, you know, you come here to get uh, great hypnosis business advice. You come here to get great hypnotic technique advice. Well, if you want to learn about dentistry, you can do a lot of things to learn about dentistry. For example, you can go to dental podcasts. There are a lot, of, a lot of them that are a lot of fun. They're very good and they actually, you know, a lot of them focus on the patient experience. A lot of them focus on things that I always talk about if you've, you know, if you if you watch any of my content, you know that I'm always talking about reducing no-shows. I'm always talking about improving case acceptance because that's what dental professionals really want from us, really can yeah. use from us. You know, they can use the other stuff, but we don't need to sell them that directly because we're just not going to get that far. Whereas if we understand their, their actual issues, the things that they perceive as their issues, and we approach them with that, like no calls and no-shows, like case accept low case acceptance, meaning 10 patients come in and only two get treatment done. Well, that's very expensive to get 10 patients to market, to get 10 patients to come in, because that's probably a lot of marketing to actually get those 10 that bite. And of those 10 that bite that come in, only two of them are actually pay becoming paying clients because of course the other, the other 10, you know, all 10 came in with a coupon for a cleaning or something. So there's no money being made there. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's the beauty of that again, is recognizing what are the, this is the ultimate in market research. What are the questions that they're already asking? What are the pain points that they're trying to resolve? And the mistake in anything is to go in with the assumption of, oh, I know what they need. Oh, they see people for these issues. Oh, I can offer that too. And as you've stated here, clearly that's going to be seen as, well, that's going to be taking away from us. As opposed to really there's a conversation, and I love this about, you know, the patient satisfaction, because it's not just that one appointment. It's the fact that in an ideal world, that person is coming at least twice a year and, you know, likely for the rest of their life, provided the service is remaining good. Ideally, yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So it becomes a question of where to meet these people, because, you know, when you can't strike the conversation one on one it's really easy to actually deliver this stuff and to say, well, what are your issues, you know, and understand and be able to say, oh, I can help with that and make that connection. But that's not very likely when you're at the restaurant. Like I said, there's only a, a small percentage of those people that you're going to meet that are actually going to work that way. So what I'm creating, you know, what I've been putting together for several years in my head and finally is sort of coming to fruition is a way for dentistry professionals that are actually interested in this kind of stuff in improving the patient experience naturally in coming and learning from us because they do exist. I mean, I, I teach at at least two dental conferences every year for the last five or six years. And my audiences now have grown to about 50 in the in the room for those two days that I teach. So, you know, they started at 10 in the room. So people are catching on. I think the natural way is definitely getting some notoriety. You know, people are more against big pharma and all these things that are taking us away from reality. And they're more towards let's find the natural remedies you know we're smart we can do these things by ourselves why do we need all these other things that we're currently letting control us does that make sense yeah yeah that there, there's there is an openness to that conversation what i want to ask about here is i'll tell you the dialogue as it usually plays out for me a student reaches out and goes yeah but i called that group and they don't want to talk on hypnosis mm -hmm. and my response is it's because they don't yet know that they need it so what, what are you going in? So as you're there presenting, let's phrase it in a general way, as you're presenting at a conference outside of this industry, is it an intro to hypnosis or is it teaching tangibles that they can actually make use of that then introduces the concepts? I generally have two presentations at this particular conference, which is the San Diego Dental Convention. And 
usually I teach one that is more focused on the things that they need and want that I know that, that will hook them, you know, so it's a little bit more how to improve your patient experience and your bottom line, how to make mm-hmm. your patients comfortable and your practice more profitable with words not drugs, that sort of stuff. So it's not necessarily hypnosis, although it is hypnotic content. So I may teach them, for example, a butt flip in the context of, well, so your patient says, oh, doctor, I, I, man, I I really, I understand I need that. I, I really do, but I just can't afford it. I'm sorry. You know, and they just get stumped. They don't know how to respond. So I teach them, for example, how to use a, a simple butt flip there and say, well, you know, I understand that, that, you know, the finances might be a little difficult right now, but you know that you need it. And why don't we just figure out a way in which we can actually make this happen for you? Right. And then turn the conversation in, into, into a yes. So basically I teach them sort of a more businessy type of course like that. And I also teach a more hypnotic related, which actually is generally called hypnotic techniques for dental professionals or something, something more direct based on hypnosis. And I generally teach them one or two techniques, depending on the time I have. It's usually a two to three and a half hour presentation. So sometimes it's one technique at length, like a pain as an object or an anchor collapse is generally what I what I focus on because they're they're easy for pretty much anybody to grasp and be able to do with some amount of success if they practice. So, you know, based on the timing, I will teach them one or both of those techniques. And then from both of those presentations, what I generally do is I get connected with them and I either go in and work with their team or I start getting referrals from them or, you know, in, in one way or another, we connect to, you know, to help improve their patient's experience in some way. What I love about that is the aspect of the, out of NLP, the agreement frame, you know, it's often drilled into somebody to go, never use the word, but, and you just demonstrated one of my favorite premises, which is that of choose your butt wisely. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that you can use it when it's effective there and it becomes a natural pivot as to, well, here's the belief system, but which is appropriately negating a sort of unresourceful belief system to then introduce something else. What I love about this is, well, talk to us a bit about the podcast first in terms of having that as an ongoing series. This has been a theme as a number of people on the program recently You know, have their own sort of media channel, whether it's their own podcast, whether it's their own YouTube or putting out something on a blog on a regular basis. What results have you seen by having that as part of your systems of having people find what it is that you do and as well what you share? It's been really interesting because I've been toying with the idea of publishing a regular podcast or some sort of regular content. And I just could not figure out what for several years, which that's why it only got started a year ago when I finally went, you know what? The reason I'm not doing this is because video seems too hard. If I, you know, if I want to do this, I want to do a YouTube channel, but I don't want to have to be, you know, proper and ready all the time. If, you know, if I need to record at 11 p.m., I want to be able to do that. And I don't want to be, you know, all dressed up or whatever. So I decided on the podcast and what I, what this has done for me, it has helped me, well, not only build relationships with a lot of amazing people that I've that I've interviewed for the podcast. All all our friends, which you know, you know, I reached out to you, and we've been just too busy to get together. But basically, I've built a lot of great relationships with our friends, continued those relationships, and I've also gotten to know many dental professionals that have reached out to me because of the podcast. Have reached out to me because of you know, reached out to me on social media, basically because of the podcast. And in fact. <laughs> This will lead per- perfectly into th- this ev- event that I want to uh, share with you. Yeah. I was talking to this doctor, Dr. Rav- Ravalia, Munir Ravalia from London, that he he reached out to me on Instagram and we struck a conversation and ended up then, you know, getting together on on a call and just chatting. And he's saying, you know what, it would be so good if if we could get this word out, like we could get more of this work to the people that need it. And I said, you know, I've been thinking about this forever. I've been wanting to put on an event and it's just so hard, the logistics. And he's like, well, why is it so hard? And I'm like, well, you know, I just getting a hotel and getting people to fly in. I mean, it's a huge expense. And then for me to prepare like three days of content or something, he's like, huh, 
yeah, it would be really fun to have a conference. And immediately I was like, huh, you know what? This is like in the middle of COVID, virtual is cool all of a sudden. And, you know, and I have a lot. It already of, was. Everyone else is just realizing. Yeah, it. Sorry. for sure. On. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden I have all these connections with amazing dental professionals that I know can make a big dent, you know, can make a, a really good impact in the dentistry profession as a whole by basically multiplying our impact, you know, coming to teach dentistry professionals in all roles of the practice. So we're going to catch the assistant, the hygienist, the doctor, the front office manager, everybody, and coming to teach them the same things that I've been teaching them, but a much more expanded version in all their different perspectives, which I can't do. So when Dr. Munir said, hey, why, don't, why not a conference? I immediately thought, you know what? I've been reading and thinking about virtual summits. This is the time. And I said, how about a virtual summit? I've been thinking about like, you know, maybe putting eight or 12 speakers together. That could work. And he goes, yeah, that would be awesome. And next thing you know, I was producing a summit. A couple of days later, I had a you know, web page going and I was starting like all my lists of people that I wanted to reach out and... I started reaching out to like the cream of the crop. If you look at the the sign up page of the the registration page of the event, it's you know the who is who of hypnosis, and there's also a lot of dentists, some uh, accredited dental speakers, you know, people that actually speak to the dentistry profession rather than the hypnosis profession. So I've gathered like the who is who cast of patient experience of naturally improving the patient experience, and we have. I mean, all sorts of things from dental anxiety to stop smoking, to teeth grinding, to fears, you know, to all, all sorts of different uh, related items, I guess, that, that affect dentistry as a profession, right? And, and the relationship that dentists are able to build with their patients. Because when the patient comes in and says, you know what, I, I hate dentists, what kind of mood does that put the dentist in? You know, it's no fun to be, to be hearing that you're, that you're hated and that you have uh, such an app word battle in order to just get to zero, you know, to just get to where they're okay with you. So what I did is I started gathering people and putting this page together. And all of a sudden this project grew from, a, you know, eight person to 12 person event to now I have like 34 presenters and six of them are in Spanish. So I even, I even created a whole <laughs> Spanish page and we have, you know, a whole market in Mexico, a whole market in Spain that is actually like going, you know, going crazy with the summit. So I, I think it's going to be a huge success just in the process of starting all the all the public promotion. So, yeah. Yeah, and I mentioned we'll redirect the show notes to make this easy for everybody. If you go to worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash dental, that will bring you over to the show notes for this specific episode where you can find the podcast as well as everything coming up for the Hypnodontics Summit. What I think is cool about that is I'm flashing back to I think how you and I first met which was at Hypno Thoughts, and suddenly I'm grabbed and it becomes, hey, we're doing a photo for my book. And I'm like, okay. And I'm in a crowd of people and I know everybody but you. Holy uh, book that you have <laughs> no idea about. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, cool. Which then turned into, hey, come to my table, we'll do a recording. No, but it's that ability to recognize where there's a need for something and to let the question be driven by how can I help resolve this problem, which right there is just the ultimate formula for providing extreme value to an audience as well as a sustainable business. Because it's always, again, back to the individual, the same as so much of this conversation has gone back to, again, for the dentist, the patient experience. So can you highlight some of those presentations? I know you and I are going to do a bit of a bonus event after it wraps up, just because I'm in the midst of uh, launching my own little project at the moment. Little, little project. So we'll do a bonus thing afterwards. But what tell us about some of the presentations that are going to be a part of this. Oh, all right. Uh, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, there, I'll highlight a, a few of them just because they are amazing. I just, just met with Gary Coles, for example. We had a talk about hypno-oncology. Yeah. I received a great presentation from James Hazelrig about storytelling tips for dentists. A meeting with Roger Moore, for example, to record something about self-care. Because guess what? Improving the patient experience is not all about the patients. 
if the team is taking care of themselves, if they're doing their self-hypnosis, if they are happy themselves, then the patient is going, you know, that's going to trickle down to the patient basically and is going to help help them improve the patient experience altogether. We have Tracy Adams with three essential techniques to help insomniacs. We have Alan Barsky with weight loss. Man, we have a long, long list. Uh, I, sh I think people should definitely, I, can, I cannot give you enough details here. I should people to check out your show notes and definitely <laughs> go check out the event at least. Whether they want to sign up or not, they can definitely see their friends here. And by the way, the event is completely free. Oh, you beat me to it. I was going to do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to say it because, you know, people are like, well, this event, you know, going to a conference like this is usually, you know, 300, 900 bucks, depending on wh what it is, you know, and I'm thinking, no, I want to make this available. You know, that's why I've built this great relationship is to be able to deliver this content back to you for mm -hmm. free. So, which as this is coming out, this event will be online. It's about two weeks from the release of this. But again, just having a lot of information to start to really bridge that conversation and really understand what the dental practices are looking for. I'm curious to ask, in terms of some of the people at the event that are dentists, what's some of that stuff that we as hypnotists, so rather than just learning from ourselves what we can do, what are some of those dental nuances that some of the other actual physicians will be sharing? Let's see. We have a surgeon, a couple of a couple of dentists, a maxillofacial surgeon. Then we have also a conscious sedation surgeon. That they're all going to be speaking on slightly different things, but mostly focused on how to deal with anxious patients. So mm -hmm. these are people that are most likely in both professions. You know, in in most of the cases that I'm I'm looking at, the people that I have here. They're in both professions, you know, they are either physicians or dentists, and they are also hypnotherapists and mind-body practitioners in some way. And they are coming to basically teach dentists what are the words that they can use, what are those simple touch points that they can start implementing within their program, within their patient's visit to overall improve the experience. I always talk about planting seeds. Mm -hmm. And the dental practice is no different. You know, you have all these different people that we talked about, different roles in the practice, and they all build up to one big event, which is the surgery, right? The actual intervention of whatever that is. So everybody plays a role. And what we will get in the summit is the wording, the specific timing of things, the body language. Man, I just had a, another awesome presentation with Paul Michel. I don't know if you know him. Yes, or familiar with him. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. You should totally have him on the show. But anyway, yeah, just everything. Everything from language to you know, how to improve their habits. Like Scott Sandlin is going to be speaking on teeth grinding. Beryl Komar is going to be talking about nail biting. Roy Hunter, anxious patients. Yeah, And as I'm looking over your hit list, my favorite memory of a uh, great hypnotist, but also dentist, Dr. Stephen Roth, we were at a restaurant outside of the NGH convention and someone cracks the joke. I think it was John Serbone <laughs> says to Stephen, what's the deal with that whole thing about four out of five dentists recommend this toothpaste? Who's the fifth? And the timing of the answer reveals the joke. He goes, oh, that's the fill in the blank horrible word who shot the lion. <laughs> <laughs> so quality people who are on both sides, there's an odd divergent, of both sides of the coin in terms of, again, presenting techniques that we can use to help to bridge that conversation. Uh, Juan, this is awesome. And the fact that, again, people can jump into that for free and the link and everything over at worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash dental. Let, let me ask you this to kind of tie it all together, which would be that here's someone's office uh, and let's say... We'll phrase it two ways. Either there's a dentist that's nearby their practice where they see hypnosis clients, or perhaps there's a relationship that you already have. I one time got up at a networking event and the pitch that I gave is I want to meet the person who sticks their fingers in your mouth. And the conversation was, I want to meet your dentist, not the mm -hmm. dentist you know down the hall, but the one you actually go to. What would you recommend in terms of, let's say, a conversational foot in the door? to start the conversation on the right tone? What's something that someone can know even in advance of this event? Yeah, so if you're approaching a dental professional that you know, like I've I've done, you know, I've done my my own outreach one one on one to some of the people that I know and say, "Hey, what do you think about this event?" I think you could reach out to 
any one of them and say, hey, you know what? A bunch of my friends are in a conference for dentistry professionals on how to improve the patient experience. Is that, you know, is the patient experience a cause that you can get behind? Because if you open the question to, do you want to improve the patient experience at your practice? Of course, if they said no, they would be mean, right? So do they want to improve the patient experience at your practice? Then, you know, there's an event that helps you do that and it's free. So I think you could introduce what you do and introduce hypnosis and get them to whet their appetite and get all the basic skills and the basic knowledge that they need from the free event. If you know a dental professional, I mean, that's what the event is mm -hmm. geared towards. However, I know because I've watched the presentations, they're so useful. And because I'm gathering this dental audience that it is the place where if you're a hypnosis professional wanting to work with dentistry professionals, is the place to meet them. Is the place where you can actually come and meet the ones that are open to what we do because that's specifically what they're coming here to learn. What I love about what you just shared, and let's turn this into a strategy elsewhere too, here's why most people hate LinkedIn, <laughs> which would be that the person is messaging you and they're immediately pitching you on something. Mm -hmm. They're immediately connecting with you, trying to sell you right away. And right there, what you've described is an amazing networking strategy of beginning from the mindset of what can I share? Mm -hmm. What can I give? I have been on some really top business podcasts back when the book came out, and I'm in the midst of doing this right now with the new program that's coming out too, of reaching out to people who are podcast hosts and by way of a little bit of market research and sleuthiness, to use the appropriate word, finding something of value, even if it's just a blog post or a link to say, hey, I heard you mention this on your podcast. Have you seen this article? And it's not my article. I'm sourcing some other piece of information and sharing it. And suddenly there's a genuine conversation. Well, and that's and the so, thing. If, so, to use, so to use this event as that foot in the door, that's outstanding. Well, yeah, I was thinking that's the thing. If I reach out and I say, hey, I have you know something that will help you, you lead with value first, as you always say, they are going to be much more interested. And reaching out and saying, hey, uh, some of my friends are in this thing is going to be perceived a lot different than me reaching out. You know, if I send an email to a dental practice and say, hey, check out my event, then I'm a spammer. But if you reach out to your dentist and your dental practice and say, hey, I know you guys are always interested in making your patients happy. Here's an event that's free that will help you do that. And a bunch of my friends are in it. And if you like it, what you see, you know, that's the kind of stuff I do. So check out the event. It's free. And then let's talk. And you're just nice. opening up the conversation and letting them self-select because it's not the caveman marketing method. You don't want to go in and hit them with a club over the head to start doing business with you. You know, you want to you want to give them something of value which I've set up for you very very easily. <laughs> and then and then hook them. You know, hook them because now you know that they're interested. Now you know that they're open to the mind body approaches and the patient experience is something they're definitely interested. Then that's the group that you really want to talk to, a very targeted group. Awesome. Awesome. This has been great. And again, everybody right away, head over to worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash dental to check out Juan's podcast and sign up for the summit. It's a free sign up. So it's a great opportunity. Before we wrap it up, any final thoughts for the listeners out there? Let's see. If you are interested in learning more about this, like I said, go in and look for dental podcast and find some hosts that you can that you can agree with or find a few episodes that focus on things that you can sink your teeth into and then of course check out my podcast the natural comfort specialist where i basically deliver uh, bite-sized techniques to dentistry and hypnosis professionals on how to improve their patient experience and their natural comfort at the office jason lenette here once again and as always thank you so much for sharing your feedback leaving your reviews online and Continuing the conversation, letting this become a resource as you interact in various groups and share with other practitioners around the world too. Once again, make sure right away you head over to worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash dental. That's going to bring you over to the show notes of this episode. From there, you can see how to connect with Juan and click the giant purple button you know how we roll, to get a, access to the Hypnodontic Summit. It's free. It's happening live and in real time, or parts of it live and in real time, the end of October. And while you're there too, again, hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. 
guessing sucks, don't reinvent the wheel, use what actually works to build a thriving hypnotic practice, whether it's in person, whether it's a virtual office online, seeing clients all around the world. Check that out, hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast at worksmarthypnosis.com. Hey, it's Jason here, and reading is lame and videos are awesome, so do this right now. Go ahead and click subscribe right here inside of this video, and that will link you to my YouTube channel, and you will be the first to find out as new information is shared here online. Click subscribe now, stay in touch. I look forward to hearing of your success very soon.